Welcome back. We're about to play the 11th session of the Walking Dead Universe role playing game by Free League Publishing. So, oh, it's been a bit of a bit of a ride for the last 10 sessions. If you've been uh, here before, welcome back. Nice to see you uh, again. If you are the first time here, thank you very much for joining us. We have 10 others to go through. Uh, quite interesting. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much indeed for subscribing. Your support is unbelievable and I'm so grateful to you. You are very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, may I uh, encourage you to do so. The added one number actually does help. It helps expose us, it helps the channel grow, it helps us become more, possibly. Uh, if you like what you see during the session, do hit that thumb. If you have any comments about where this might go, and I will be asking because I've got some ideas, uh, do put them in and we can discuss them. Uh, we can follow this now uh, as I segue over to it. So I, because of what's happened to Simon up until this point, Simon is in the army base, he's attempting to scavenge, he's not got very much at all. He's basically, he's got a gas mask, some flares and a map. That's all he's got left. He is on his own. He has become shattered. Uh, so he is emotionally shutting himself off because of the death of his companion and partner, Kai. Uh, basically, I say death. Go check it out. It would be up there. I'll put a link up there. Go check it out. He has become a lone wolf. Now, we also said that the end of the game has begun. We then created the faction who is moving into this area of Sydney, the game is based in uh, Sydney, New South Wales in Australia, uh, called Faith Reborn. We have outlined some of the things that we're expecting the Faith Reborn to begin doing and I was thinking where do we, where am I going to take it? So I have a sort of plan, I mean first off we need to get Simon, I think we will take Simon through the rest of the base, uh, Simon will uh, explore the rest of this army base and see if he can gather some supplies. He has two days worth of food. One of those rations is going to be consumed today as he awakens from hiding out. We have that swarm that's moved in to the base. So it's going to make Simon has to get two successes to get anything to work. So it's going to be hard for Simon to do. So if Simon succeeds in clearing the base or he might give up because it's becoming too hard. Uh, we will then have Simon travel to foot. Now previously in the last episode, I said that some of the things I wanted Simon to try and food, find was food, water, weapons, transport, and clothing. I am willing to forego, in fact, I may purposely forego transport. I'm, we might make sure that Simon can't find transport because that will help the story. That means it's gonna take him at least four days to travel back to the Haven. Now, we already said that Marsden Park has fallen to Faith Reborn. At the moment, Simon is here in this army base. If he is to travel north, he will travel through this area where Kai, with the swarm, he would have to travel through Marsden Park that we've already rolled to say Marsden Park has fallen to the Faith Reborn, through the area where the Norse were, and then up back to the Haven where he will find the Major and Anne. Now, this is some of my thoughts. We've said that Marston Park area has fallen to the Faith Reborn. We rolled that. So some of those will have know about the Haven and maybe have got to escape. So we can randomly say how. We'll definitely say Joey has led some. Which means that if Simon can make it there, then we could then start to have a chase to the end. This is episode 11. I'm thinking this is a 15 part series. If I, we were writing it as a TV series, it feels like a 15 part arc and then we'll find out what happens. And the only thing that I can say, and it was a thought that I've been just been racking my brains for the last week, what, what, what am I gonna do? Like, how does the story go? How am I gonna, like, where will we take this? We can do, randomly do roles, but it, it's meant to be some sort of TV arc. So although we can randomly roll events that will occur, that, that it feels like that the intention with the Walking Dead universe role-playing game is it's a TV series. Now, if we were writing this, what would we do? So this, this is the question. So I've got an idea of where I think we could either end the series or take the series to. We've got several things going on at the moment. I'll go through these and then during this episode you can think about, you can put into the comments what sort of things would you do and then we'll roll uh, with Simon clearing the base. 
Uh, we've got the army base which we're going to clear. We know there's that chapel down south. We're about to see if that's going to clear. I don't think it will do. Uh, we know that there's the lab team. Uh, and we know that there's this area of the swarm. We're about to clear this, this swarmed area with... Oh, no, no. That's uh, the uh, St. Ives. The St. Ives area up here. That's this one over here. We know we've got an area up here which has got loads of stuff as well. But we also know we have the Norsemen. The Norsemen are still around. And we now have Faith Reborn, which is moving into this area and typing to clear them, clear them out. So we've got the Norsemen and we've got the Faith Reborn. So if we head up, what do we do next? So let's, let's go through our solo procedure. And you can think about, I mean, I've already thought, I think I know where this might go. I think I know where I might take it, but I'm open to hear what other people think as well. So solo procedure, how much time has, has cleared? Uh, it's overnight. Uh, next one, roll for the clock on each one. So let's do that, roll for the clock. We've got the base where we are at the moment, we're gonna clear that. We've got the chapel, if we roll a six, it clears. Nope. We've got the lab team, which is more in, in a city. We've got the technical lab team. Something happened to the lab, but the lab team is still hanging around. They're on a four, they stay the same. We've got the swarm of the goodies, which is up at St. Ives. That's on a three, three rather. It's a three, so it stays the same. We've got the Norseman, which stands at a five. That doesn't move forwards. And we've got Faith Reborn, which is the end game. That stands at a two at the moment, a six. That moves on to, to a three. So normally, well actually, I'll just go on to the next one. Update your Havens projects. We don't know about that. It's been two days. We're, we're late by two days back to the base. Step five, decide on a challenge and activate it. Our challenge is finish clearing the base and then head back to the Haven. That's basically Simon's challenge at the moment. Finish with the base, get enough stuff if he can to get up to the Haven, or just try to get to the Haven. Try and get back to the Haven, which is four days travel away. The Haven is at least four days travel away. I know I just did it, but I can't remember, so let's just show you. You can move one 10 kilometer square a day. One, two, three, four. Four days away to get back to the Haven. More if you fail some of those rolls. But we'll just do time moving on like that first step. Uh, scene challenge, embark on a run, return to your haven at the end of the challenge. So we are having Simon attempt to clear. So Simon awakens in the morning. Now there I is, they don't know he's there, but there is a swarm. We roll to say that a swarm had moved into the base. We know there's a swarm moving around the base anyway, like herds, like waves moving in and out. If anyone's read the comics, they talk about it quite extensively in like the, the last third of the run of the series. Uh, so three is the walkers are aware of you. All nearby walkers will be shambling towards you, but we're not at that stage. We are at two, there are walkers close by, but they are not aware of you yet. The GM can draw a map of the air, la 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 la. So we are in the base. I think the last place where we stopped was the chapel. So we're in an office area with a chapel. The swarm came in, everything needs two hits to succeed. Though I said find, find transport last session, I've got to write myself notes. We're not going to try and find transport, we just need to get him to have we weapons. So uh, Simon will awaken in the offices. Uh, he has heard all of those, I've, all, I've got the one, one stress from him awakening. He's heard them all coming round. Uh, he will sit in there, he will feel I don't know, would he feel weird? Let's make him just a plain empathy roll. Uh, we're, oh, we're not gonna chuck a stress dice. Oh yeah, all right, we're gonna chuck a stress, stress dice. Stress dice in. So what the stress dice is, if a stress die comes up as a walker, he's absolutely oblivious to the state he's in. If it comes up with at least one hit, he knows something's wrong with him. He's trained, he's a trained psychologist, he's a doctor, a trained psychologist. Uh, though I've got it down as a scientist, he's, he's, got, he's got higher degrees. Uh, he's basically, he's, he's, got, he's a registered psychologist because uh, he was working as that. So he, would, he's, he might be suspicious of himself. Uh, he's got one hit. He knows there's something wrong. He feels that there's something wrong with him. Uh, he knows that he's, been, he got, he's more affected by what happened to Kai than he thought he was, but he... He, so there was, I, I don't know if you've ever seen Top Gear, but uh, way back in the history of Top Gear, Richard Hammond had a, an accident 
where he drove a rocket car, it flipped, he was in a coma for a bit, he got quite badly, he got brain damaged, and for a while, he stopped being able to feel emotions properly. Simon isn't scared at the moment, he's, he's just not feeling things properly, he feels numb. So he knows he feels numb. I'll write that down, numb. Try and remind me. So, he needs stuff. So he's gonna go out and he's gonna start exploring. We will roll a D, well we know it's a two. We're putting it on two anyway. So normally you would roll randomly and two threat levels. So there are, there are walkers that are starting to bumble around the buildings because there are open doors in places. Uh, they're piling up against the walls, so some are falling in through windows. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, Size-wise, we would say it's a big swarm that's come in. Uh, if, if, if Simon wasn't so numb, he would be terrified because we're talking swarm, swarm size four. Uh, swarm size four, Simon can't fight these, particularly now we've learned that the rules are you add the threat to the swarm size and that's how many successes you need to try and defeat a swarm. There's no way Simon can do this in, on their own. In fact, there's no way anyone could do this in just pairs. We need to stop moving in pairs. So Simon is gonna to attempt to explore around this building. So he will move in to the next section and attempt to find out if he can find anything. So we'll roll some keywords to see if we can work out what the two keywords, what the next section is. Three, four, four. Uh, schism, uh, two, one, four, schism, exhaustion. Schism, exhaustion, I don't know, exhaustion just makes me think of a training area. So maybe, let's, let's make it, I don't know, the first thing, give him a chance to find something. He's moving more into the ranges and the areas. He's gonna have to make a, a scout roll or a stealth roll. Same either way, he'll have to make a stealth roll to try and move across to the range area. He's gonna try and find himself a firearm. Uh, he does have one in range combat. He's gonna move across using stealth, which will give him a three for agility, a two for stealth, and a one for a stress dice. So he's attempting to move across the camp. Maybe he's climbed up onto the roof and he's trying to move across the roof and he's gonna to have to make a jump across, but he needs to do this stealthily or he'll get a, some boards or you find some wood that's been left on the roof because people have already tried to do this and they've built, they've previously built little bridges across. He's gonna try and get across into the next area. Uh, he gets a walker, all right? So we will roll on the messing up oracle. So, oh no, or we could push. If we push, do we re-roll walkers? Or do we freeze the walkers? Is this like Twilight 2000 where the failures you hold? Pushing, page 49. Let's see if you can get there before me. Or are you shouting at the camera? You re-roll all the dice that are not successful, so that includes walkers, and you add one. So, but I have to describe it. So, as I said, uh, he's attempting to sneak across a, uh, he's attempting to sneak across a painter's board, which has been stretched across a building. Uh, the painter's board just slightly uh, starts to jiggle, and it slips down, and Simon dives across, now this is a stealth roll. So this is that he, that it catches on, so basically this is a roll that the bolt slips down, it catches on some uh, overhead cables and hangs there, or it falls off. So he needs to get, oh, what do we want? We need two successes, don't we? Oh, three successes, outstanding. So, uh, He's moving across from rooftop to rooftop into an area that is the the, uh, the armory and there's a firing range and various stuff. I don't know how these things are structured. Uh, I guess, no, you would probably keep them together. Uh, and the painter's board that he's trying to climb across, he's not really paying attention because he's too busy watching the walkers milling around and doesn't notice that as he's walking across it, as he's crawling across it, it's slipping behind. And just as he reaches the other side, he grabs hold as it drops and just hits some cables and he's suspended as he's hanging on the edge. He doesn't make a sound, three rolls, and he's able to get a foothold and get himself back onto the rooftop. So he's now in the fourth area, which is the which has a weapons, lockers, and various other stuff. Now, are all of the weapons moved out of here? Or, uh, so that'd be survival, which is three and four, three, 
and a one, so we drop one. Uh, can he actually get anything useful in here? So we just need a hit in this area. We're looking around this area, trying to find something useful. Two hits. That means we roll two rolls on the scavenging table. So we definitely have two hits on the scavenging table. And then we'll ask the oracle, is there an abundance of stuff? If it says yes, he gets a third roll. An extreme, yes, he gets two rolls. Uh, that cancels that, and we just get a no. So there is not, there's, there's bare minimum amount of stuff in here. So he gets to roll on the scavenge which is uh, hundreds, tens units. Oh, here it goes. Scavenging table is in the appendices. Uh, so we get three, six, four. One set of rations. So he finds uh, some uh, MRE rations. Anything we can possibly count as a weapon. Anything that's close to counting as a weapon, I'll count as a weapon. Four, one, two. Toolbox. Oh, tools might be useful to him. Underneath it says spear, toolbox. All right, we're gonna get, we'll count that as tools. So he's able to get a set of tools. That'll give him a plus two in trying to do something technical. So, all right, how about, we'll give him a chance. I'm gonna give an oracle roll and we're gonna say, uh, can he find a locked weapons locker? So this, that, sca that scavenging roll was trying to find stuff to easily acquire, this is, can he find some weapons behind a locker and we can make him use the tools and he's handy to use tech to break open the weapons locker. So all we need is a yes, that the, he finds some weapons in a weapons locker. Maybe not ammunition yet, but we can try and scavenge ammunition off of bodies in the floor. Uh, that's complicated. So that would say it's complicated. All right, complicated. So let's make it complicated. What the complication is, is that he comes across uh, a weapons locker and it's got weapons in it, but there is a soldier milling around in front of it. Now, what we will say is, if he can defeat the soldier and he can get in, then we will say that he, he can break open the locker and there's ammunition as well. Otherwise, he can't. So first off, we will say that he is going to attempt to sneak up, we'll give him a stealth check, to stealth up to the zombie, and then he will do a close combat check to basically finish off the zombie. The tools that he found contain uh, at least a hammer that he could use to try and dispatch the zombie. So first off, he will attempt to stealth towards the zombie, which is a two, a three for agility, and a two because he's finding this quite stressful. Uh, he needs to stealth towards the zombie, Oh, does he need only one hit or two hits? We'll see what we roll. Uh, two hits and a walker will roll on the messing up table. Uh, we won't take more stress, so he's definitely snuck up to the zombie, but maybe the zombie will turn just as he's about to do something. Let's, let's roll on the messing up table and see what happens. 14, fail to notice a couple of walkers who close in on you a single attack. Okay, he has a single walker attack. Does this, mean, does this mean that we roll on the walker attack table? Or does this mean that, oh, because this can kill him. What's the fault you won't come up as? All right, it repeatedly cuts and stabs you with a rusty sharp object wedged through one of its hands. Take two points of damage. All right, so what we're gonna say is he sneaks up to, to the zombie. He sneaks right up close to it, uh, but he is, he, he tries to stab it, but it's got an armored helmet on, which, may, no, he tries to hit it with a hammer, but he's, he's not really trained in this sort of stuff. So he fails to dispatch it with a hammer. It turns, he doesn't notice that it's got like the, the rusty object wedged in one of his hands, which means that Simon takes two points of damage and becomes battered, but he does finish off the zombie in the same process. So the zombie goes down, Simon is battered. Uh, we've cleared off that one area and Simon is now can, can now attempt to open up this box and we will give him an assault rifle in the process if he can get this open so Simon is be bleeding Simon will spend some time binding his wounds uh, he doesn't really cry I mean if anybody was watching they'd think there's something wrong with this lad 
Uh, he now has a tech of one, a wits of three. He's got two for handy. Do you notice I'm not doing the dearly departed letter? I think last week when I did that, I didn't like it very much. So I'm gonna leave those for a bit until we, until we move forward. Uh, and we'll give him two for the toolbox. I quite worried myself with that. Uh, and he's gonna to attempt to open up this weapons locker and try and get what's inside. We will need two hits for him to do it quietly. Oh, I don't know what we're gonna do for Walker. Uh, one hit. We could say he opens it, but it gets noisy, which means they know he's there, or he's gonna take a stress. He'll take an additional stress because he's, he's nearly got it done and he'll try and really force this open. So he's already got one hit, he needs one more hit. Uh, one more hit, <laughs> that's what he needs. No walkers, thankfully. So he manages to open up this weapon locker uh, and he's got himself an assault rifle. Okay, so he's armed with a ranged weapon. He does have something which is a really bad close weapon. He really wants to find something else like that. So maybe we will continue looking around and see if we can find that Simon something else of use and then where Simon was, is going to call it quits here and start to uh, he head out or try to head out. I've got, I had some ideas about that with maybe making some noise, he's got some flares, he has flares, maybe he can try and find something and jewellery rig it to make noise, maybe he can find a central office with the tannoy system and he can try and make some noise somewhere in a section and pull all the walkers across to one end of the base and then get out by the other end of the base. I don't, I mean, I mean, unless, unless he right, he's really lucky, I don't want him to find a vehicle because I want him to take time moving up north. So I think that will create a better story that we can have like time just drags out and between the two bits is we've got like almost a week passes and then Simon resurfaces at the Haven and then we'll do some rolls to find out the stuff that he sees along the way. But anyway, keywords for the next section Simon moves into. 622. Redemption. 513. Exploration. Okay, I reckon redemption, this is going to be a medical unit. This is the medical area that he's wandered into. And the medical area will remind him of Kai and remind him of the time that he worked with Kai at the Prince of Wales Hospital. This reminds him of that. Uh, let's make him <laughs> make a, uh, we'll just make him make a face your fear roll, which is an empathy. Uh, no, so he freezes for a bit uh, as he's there and moves into the area. Uh, and so he finds that he basically almost blacks out uh, and time has ticked on and it's the afternoon. And he will now get a chance to, to explore this area. So we'll make it, I mean, stealth or scout is basically it's the same. So he's going to try and explore around this area. We need two hits on uh, stealthing or scouting. He hasn't got anything that's going to help him with either one. So that's a three for wits or agility, a two for stealth or scout. And he's at the moment on three, three stress. He's blacked out for a bit. So he's been standing around. So it's possible that some of the walkers just stumbled upon him. He's got one hit, which we said he needed two to get into an area successfully. So that would mean that he, so it would mean that he isn't pounced by any walkers, but moving into this area uh, means there's only one area left to explore. He fails to move into this area because he blacks out. He, when he comes to, he hears some sounds uh, and uh, there's uh, there are a couple of zombies have just cracked, like moved into the, the area, and he detects them, but he didn't follow a walker, so they don't detect him. But he isn't able to search this area and get anything out of this area. So he will then get a chance to clear the final area of this part of the base, uh, which would be all he gets to do today is move into the next area of the base. Oh, I thought we could find something useful in there, but he hasn't. He's, he's, he has to run out of there without finding anything. Basically, he's got two days worth of food, which means that by the time he move, starts moving north, he doesn't have enough food to get back to the haven. So he would get to the haven hungry, and we'd have to look up what that involves. 
So the next area, the final area, we've got 544 as a keyword. Innovation, okay. Is this gonna be some tool shed? Giving, well, this might give him a chance to find a melee weapon. Innovation, 225, table two, 25, hostility. All right, so this is gonna be, so the final area that he's gonna to get to explore today and then he's going to leave. He's, there's two other areas that exploring is going to be uh, some, to uh, like maybe a, a, not a garage, but somewhere where uh, stuff to like, you know, where, where maybe like a, there'd be air conditioning stuff. People need to repair air conditioning and things like that. There'd be some tools, there'd be some construction work stuff that might need to go on. There'd be some, some things. He maybe had to get himself another sledgehammer. So we'll now do another a stealth roll to get into this area to try not to get caught uh, where we've got three stress so we've got three wits two for stealth or three agility two stealth three wits two scout and then we've got three uh, stress die uh, and then on that journey north we will give him experience points we'll give him at least 10 experience points that he can put something up with 10 experience points after this few days, because I haven't done experience because I've just thought he's one thing after another thing. He doesn't have enough time. Uh, he's got one hit. Do we risk it? It's risky. But all right, he's gonna go to four stress and attempt to push. He keep, keeps the one roll. Uh, one, two rolls. So we get, we get lots of hits, but he stumbles upon a walker. So we'll do, we'll roll the messing up table, but he does get three, at least three hits in this area. Uh, one, one, I don't think that's very much, one, one. Alert a nearby swarm by making noise, raise the threat level one step. All right, so this is, this is why he's going to leave the area because the swarm know he's here, but when we hit three, that puts him up to five stress because you instantly get up to, you add one stress. So he knocks over a whole bunch of stuff, uh, though he's in a secure area at the moment. There's no way they can get in. They hear him inside and he starts hearing banging on, the, on a roller door and banging at one of the side doors. And when he peeks in through the window, he can see them, them all starting to mill around the building. So he's in the building. He might be able to get to the roof. He might be able to get out, but he's gonna get three rolls on the scavenge table Plus, he might be able to get another one. Is, is there an abundant amount of stuff in this area? Uh, yes, so he will get four rolls on the scavenge table. So we'll give him four rolls and hopefully he can find something that is more worthwhile and he can find some form of melee weapon to help him out as he moves north. So what do we have on the scavenge table? We have one, five, two. A harmonica? All right, I'm going to say instead of a harmonica, it's going to be it's going to be a, like a, a battery powered radio, a battery stereo, so he can make noise basically. Or we'll we'll just say that he can get access to it if we give him a tech roll, he can then activate something. Uh, we've got five, six, six, crowbar, weapon, crowbar. Crowbar gives him a damage of two, a plus one bonus, and it takes one slot. The assault rifle takes one slot. So we've got, so he can, he's got one more slot free. I'll say the map can go in his pocket. It doesn't take up a whole slot. Uh, so that was battery throw, crowbar, and he's got two more. Six, five, six, six, five, six. Smoke deer meat, 10 rations. Okay, so he's got enough rations to head north. He's got enough drive rations that he can head up north. And his final is 366. 366 is protein bars and a bottle of wine, run ration. All right, so he's got enough rations that he can head up north. He's got a physical weapon, a crowbar, and now he's got an assault rifle. So we'll assume that he's been able to scavenge enough ammunition. He now feels set, but he needs to get out of here. So first things first, he will try to find where the, uh, he's, <laughs> he's got, He's gonna to have to try and face his fears, otherwise he's gonna develop another fear. Uh, he will 
All right, no, he's not gonna do that tonight because he's got the five stress. He was going to, first off, he will attempt to sleep. So he's gonna try and find himself somewhere safe to sleep. First things first. Oh no, we said this area is safe. I said this area is safe. Didn't I say this area is safe? I said this area is safe. So, so he's gonna curl up and he's gonna have a sleep. And so he'll curl up in the, like underneath a workbench or something. And he'll curl up under a workbench and he will sleep the night and we will make him make, a, he has to make a face your fear roll because he's re he reached ended up reaching five stress. So facial fear is for empathy, but because he has Lone Wolf, he's his own anchor, he gets an extra two dice. Two hits. Okay, so he was okay, he's contained himself. We will roll it down, but there's still, all right, let's see, if we get an extreme yes, then we will knock that down and we'll say that they've got, no, 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 they're still there. They're still there, uh, but he's used to them being outside. So the walkers are still outside. There's still the swarm. Simon needs to find where the tannoy system is. Then he needs to fix the tannoy system and start it making noise to create a confusion to get out and head back north. So he's got two things he's got to do. First, he has to find where the tannoy system is. He doesn't have any stress left. That gives him three wits and one for survival. Uh, he, has he looked, found anything in here? He hasn't found anything here that's gonna help him what, know where it is. He needs to get at least one hit to be able to locate where, to know where the uh, tunnel system would be run from. No, okay, so we're gonna have to push it, which means he now goes to having one stress. Oh, come on. Yes, that's gonna be three. So he gets one hit. So he now knows where the tannoy system is. So now he's gonna to need to get to the tannoy system. So that is going to be a stealth roll, which is a three and a two, and he's one thing. This is where we need two hits to get to the stealth roll. He's never gonna do this. Nope, and we've got a walker, so that's on the messing up table. Uh, 33. Oh man, he's rolling so many walkers. 33, lost or someone important to you is put into danger. Okay, so he's got a bit lost. He is going to have to roll. Uh, so let's give him a two stress and he is go going to two stress. So he's got lost. He now needs two hits to find where this tunnel system is because he's been wandering around in this place trying to find it and he can't find where it is. Where was a two, a three, and a two, is that right? So three for wits, a two for scout, and a two for his stealth. Nothing. He can't find where it is. All right, so he can't find where it is. So what else is he gonna do? He can't, he knows the tunnel system's there. He can't find where it is. Maybe he can tap into it. Maybe he's gonna use the stereo that he's got. He's found where the cables are, but he can't find where the, the control center is. So maybe he's gonna to attempt to tap into the control, the uh, toner system, and just basically try and override it and force something down there. Even if it's static, just noise, something, which will mean that he needs to make a tech roll. The tools that he's got aren't really gonna help, but he can use the handy to get plus two. So his tech, his wits is a three, his tech is a one, handy gives him a plus two, and he's got two for stress. So what he's attempting to do is attempting to cut into the, the system and just override it and just feed static down it. Just something to create a lot of noise to confuse the walkers to give him an advantage to get out. And maybe he'll, you chuck some flares, he'll just use the, all of the flares he's got and chuck all those out uh, and then he'll see if he can get out. Otherwise, I don't know, he's gonna have to blow something up. Maybe then he will have to blow something up. He'll find the kitchens, which I think I said he'd found before, and he'll just blow them up and they just run away and try and get, do that to create a distraction. Okay, okay. He's, gonna, he's gonna force that one. He's getting really stressed, which gives him three stress dice, and then he gets to reroll everything. So again, so what he's doing, so this didn't work, so he's now tried to, he's pulling out loads of cable, he's getting really overwrought, he's wiring stuff up, he's found other batteries that he's connected into it, he found some, uh, a, a little telly, that he's connecting into up, he's just trying to get this system to make a load of noise. 
Okay, he's got two walkers and two hits. So he's able to do it, but we will make a, a roll on the messing up table. Uh, 44, it's not gonna be good. Immediately roll to handle your fear. Okay, so he's getting stressed by this. Uh, and the thought of, so he's getting stressed. He's thinking back, he gets a hit, so that's good enough. He's thinking back on Kai, he's thinking back on everything he's done. He's just feeling numb, he doesn't feel right. Nothing seems to feel right. He's sure this is all just futile and he might as well just walk out into the swarm and just get it done. And he's just about to give up as one of the battery sparks and just a huge static noise starts to play over the Tannoy system. And the, the zombies outside begin to wander around and get a bit frantic and move towards where all the speakers are and start to claw up at the speakers and bash into the post of the speakers. And Simon will take advantage of this to try and get out. So this is where Simon is going to attempt to run. So he's got a strength, stealth or mobility. He's gonna roll mobility because he's gonna instantly take advantage of this to try and leg it out of here. Now, if he hits, gets two successes on this, he manages to get out of the base and we close the episode <laughs> with Simon with a rifle over shoulder, a crowbar in hand, carrying uh, a, a bag in his hand and a backpack, which is basically the food, trying to get out of this area. Let's just erase the flares. Uh, so he's got three stress, he's got three for his agility, two for his mobility. This is Simon trying to get out. A walker will mean that he gets stopped by uh, some walkers and he's gonna have to try and fight them, otherwise it's a walker attack, no matter what. Okay, <laughs> he fails that due to the stress. He's now gone to four stress dice. Uh, he, he needs to get the hits to get out and again, a walker will mean that he has to fight a walker to get out. Uh, he gets two hits. He uh, A walker seems like a walker is stumbling towards him, but he evades it, he does a, a dodge, and then just keeps running and he runs out of the base where walkers are slowly milling after him and he's just running, heading north to try and get back to the haven, which is where we will end that with Simon getting out of the base with what he's got uh, and his broken brain. Uh, he only got to full stress, so he doesn't have to face his fear at the end of this session. So no face fear. Uh, by, for, so for next session, uh, back to base, we'll give, him, we'll give him 10 XP and we'll then need to tell the story of how he got back to Haven and we'll do rolls, so we'll assume, we won't bother him rolling for sector to sector, he gets back to the haven, but we will do oracle rolls sector by sector to see what he finds. And what we want is some ideas on how we close this between uh, the end game. So we've got a new faction coming in, we've got the old faction, the Norsemen, who are there, we have a few pockets of people and a few things still going. What do we do next? That was tense. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for watching all the way through. If you're a subscriber, you're uh, very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, please consider it. If you liked what you saw, please hit the old like. Uh, if you have any comments, and I do wanna see what you think, uh, put them down in the comment section. Beyond that, let's find out what Simon sees on his journey back to the Haven, up north, where he will hopefully get back with the Major and Anne, that's even if that's the, the Haven's still there or anybody got there a week later than was expected of him. Let's see what happens next time. There.